Hi, I'm Fight, and today I want to show you how to work with Git and set up repositories and work with repositories inside the Glamorous Toolkit. The Glamorous Toolkit version that I'm using right now is v08.12.59, which as of time of recording is the newest version. I just downloaded it, it's completely fresh. It doesn't have any repositories in it, nothing else either. Um, and if we look at where I downloaded it from, well, from the website, 1259, released on February 25th, 1339. And the architecture of this machine is uh, M1, the new Mac machines, new as of time of recording. And that is what I downloaded. I also created a repository over here. This repository is completely empty. There's nothing in it, no history, no readme, no nothing. Um, it is a private repository. That's important to note here uh, because it's going to change the way you have to interact with it. Now, the first thing that we have to do in the Glamorous Toolkit is we're going to have to teach the Glamorous Toolkit how to work with private repositories or how to authenticate with GitHub. Um, we have a little page with that, how to work with GitHub. And it says before being able to work with GitHub, you first need to set up the credentials for GitHub, which makes sense. Um, if you download a public repository, then you don't need to authenticate. But if you download a, a clone, a um, private repository github needs to check whether you have the correct access rights and if you push no matter whether it's a private or public repository github also has to check that you have the correct access rights and so there is a little script here this uh, for me will work out of uh, the box but i'm going to go through uh, it with you a little bit just to see what it does so first of all it is ssh credentials which means it's not username and password so we're going to clone over ssh which is one of the options that you can clone a github repository from the other being username and password word over https which if we look at the uh, classes and look at the class hierarchy here uh, the credentials also have plain text credentials which is exactly that so that would be that would work with with um https i believe so we set it up to work with any host we could also set it up to just work with github.com uh the username is is git um which is usually the default username um if we look at the url here we see that it's git add github.com so this makes total sense this is correct um, and it assumes as of now here that your uh, ID, that you use your default ID um, over SSH, which is usually stored in your home folder under .SSH in IDRSA pub. And because we need a string here, we're, we're going to call path string on that. And the same for the, for the um, secret. Now I can show you the, uh, the public file. So if I do that, then you see, well, this is, this is the public uh, key. You can find that uh, on GitHub as well, which um, there is a neat little trick to figure out what, what people's uh, public SSH keys are. Um, I'm not going to show you the private one because it's private. And in the end, so what we end up with um, is a SSH credential. And we will store that in our credential store, which means that we can have multiple of those credentials for multiple different uh, settings, and we can have them for different hosts and so on. And then we set use custom SSH true, which uh, is an implementation detail. But as I said, uh, this works out of the box for me, and uh, I will have a credentials provider. This working does not mean that it actually does work uh, for you, however because it's lazy. So it is only going to be evaluated once you need it. Now, we can download the Faker repository. And uh, if this works, this is not necessarily an indication that um, 
these credentials work because this is a public repository of think.com, but it is a good sign that we can at least download something. Now, if we look at uh, our Git, we actually have the Faker repository here, and this is what a repository usually looks like. So we have commits, we have some packages, we can look at the repository directory, um, and, and we have some settings here, like which file format it uses, where the code directory is, and so on. Um, and if we want to add a new repository over Git rather than over, as we did here, Metacello, then we can click this plus button. And we can either add a local file a directory. That means that we already downloaded something and we just want to add it to our image. Or we can clone it. Cloning uh, works with a URL. And because we used SSH credentials, we're going to use the SSH URL. And so if I use this to clone, then I'm going to get a repository as well. But it's going to have a little status um, sign here that says no project found because this is completely empty. So of course, there is no project. We have automatically already generated a little properties file. This properties file just contains for now what file format we're using and the default is tunnel for us. So we can already commit that even though it's still a broken in um, eh, scare quotes, um, a, a broken repository, but we can say initialize repository here. And we have our first commit. So this little dot means that it's outgoing. So uh, that's why it's blue. There are other colors. If you hover over them, they're going to tell you what, what this is. We can push this now or we're going to continue working with, with this repository for now. And I'm going to continue working for now, and then we're going to push at the end. Just, you know, whatever suits you. Um, and because we have no project, we're going to get a little repair action here that says create project metadata. And here's a little bit of information on, on what this means and what this does. And the last line is, or last two lines are the most crucial, add a new source folder, e.g. called SRC selected, and click on OK to add the missing project metadata. And SRC is kind of the convention here. Um, and I, if I type SRC, I'm going to create that uh, directory. But because um, we could also have uh, JavaScript or, or Python in it, or we could even write a VM plugin in C, I'm just going to prefix it with Faro so that the things coexist with each other. So I've selected this repo um, directory now. And if I click on OK, it's going to set, uh, it's going to create this um, directory. It's going to set some properties in here, which is the same properties that we saw uh, earlier. And it's going to set a project f file, which uh, the, the project is just going to tell Faro that the source directory is Faro source. All right, so we know all of this now. We can now say, well, initialize um, project, I guess. And we already have a project. So from now on, we can actually start writing source code. And there are kind of two ways to go about uh, doing that. There is one way where uh, we're going to create a baseline and we're going to work with that baseline and we're going to, you know, create. Um, our dependencies and so on and so forth. There is actually a little demo on um, a, in the pages uh, how to set up a new GitHub repo. This is going to guide you through a new baseline. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're just going to create a, a baseline, right? Um, just so you can see how one could do this. Um, so I'm going to say baseline of demo. And this is going to just add a new baseline here. And I can uh, click save or, or, you know, um, cancel, cancel is going to just cancel this action, of course. Uh, but if I save it, it's going to create a package baseline of demo in which there is a class baseline of demo, in which there is a baseline. If you don't know what a baseline is, it's kind of how you work with uh, dependencies in Faro. And I'm not going to explain very much about this just because um, this is not really a, a tutorial on baselines as a tutorial on Git, but kind of all that you need to do is define your uh, dependencies and your packages in this baseline method. 
this is the entry point kind of into this world. And so we're, we're just going to say initialize baseline here. And uh, by the way, if you want to inspect it, you could either, you know, say baseline of demo here, right? But you could also go in here and uh, select this and command B and then it will open up here just just so you know, right? All right. So we have this repository. Now we have a baseline. We have a project, we have the repository set up in reverse order. Now, what we can do is add packages. And we already have a package added, which is the baseline of demo baseline uh, package. Now, because I don't want any code to, uh, to write any code in this tutorial, I'm just going to select something that might already be there in this case, well, we might as well use faker. And this is not necessarily a good idea because of course faker uh, already exists and it is already in a repository but you could re-export things if you wanted to so i'm just going to pretend that we wrote all of this code now and we look at it it's it's a lot of code it's everything in this this um little a package may maybe not little but in this package and what we can do now is we can also select and deselect um, changes so if I if I for instance remove this faker uniform choice and I'm pretty sure that this is probably going to be used somewhere in this package um, so I'm just gonna say initialize broken package and if I do this then what's gonna happen is we're gonna commit everything except uh, faker uniform choice. And if you look at this, the array symbol changed because we know this class uh, before we added this class, but now we know it. Um, but faker uniform choice is still here. And if we look at our commits and we look at the changes in this commit, then we will say that array um, has weighted choice and all the other functions uh, methods, but not faker uniform choice. And that's because we didn't select it to be committed. And now, um, I'm just gonna collect, uh, connect. The, I'm just gonna commit this as well. And now, once we do that, uh, we actually have a fully functioning package. Now, at this point, we have five commits, and they kind of set up our project as we need it to be, and we can work from there. Um, we could also. Um, add a little bit of documentation. And the way to do that in the Glamorous Toolkit usually is through Lepeter databases. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the Lepeter database directly in here. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can also do that through the Lepeter uh, views, but um, the Lepeter tool. But I'm going to add the uh, Lepeter directly here. I'm going to say add this database, and it's, it's going to be called Lepeter, and I'm gonna say, well, please do that for me. And and we have an empty database, right? And if I click Command B on that, then we will see. Well, it's it's an empty database. Okay, so that's nice. Now, what we can do if we go into Lepeter um, is we're going to see we have my uh, default, we have the Glamorous Toolkit, and we have Lepeter. And now in that uh, the GT for Git Lepeter. And in that, we can, for instance, write a test page. Mm, wage is not the right word. Um, page. Now, this is going to be our little test page. It's going to be in the uh, uh, GT Git demo Lepeter. And once this is committed, it should show up in our um, in our Git view. Now, I'm just going to uh, oop, <laughs> close a few things is what I wanted to say. Uh, while we're waiting for this thing to turn basically green. We can also look whether it's already there. Um, it is. So that's nice. Uh, we didn't have to wait for it to commit. That's, that's kind of nice. Or maybe it did commit and the bobble just didn't update. Sometimes those things happen. Now we have a little uh, database with properties and a page. And if we look at the diff, sadly, this is going to diff the not the nice Lepeter rendered page, but it's going to diff actually the serialized Lepeter page. But we can look, uh, it is in fact our page, page one, and it does in fact somewhere in here contain 
uh, it was test page, wasn't it? Yes, uh, test page. So this looks correct, and uh, we can commit that and initialize the database. And now once we do that, we are truly and completely up and running. We have our little database here. We have our baseline. So we can push all of this and hopefully on the other side of the world in on GitHub servers, this should now be there. And it is, we have six commits and we do have a Lebiter, uh, Lebiter um, directory and we have a Faro source directory with two packages. So that looks nice. We have everything here. Um, at this point, you might, you know, change the branch. You might want to change the origin, that kind of stuff. But this is all you need to do to get up and running. And I hope this was informative. And I hope uh, this will help you in the future. And I hope you have a great day.